Hey up lads and lasses, Danfire here, back again with some more Infinite Lagrange. Today, looking at the Guardian, and we are carrying on with the Destroyer Ship Guide, I guess. Uh, so yeah, let's jump straight into the Guardian. Guardian, similar to the series, has almost a, you know, a useful situation in all of its variants. So again, we'll talk about it the same way. Support type, again, like the series support, really good support. I have actually seen this doing some AA damage as well, so there's something to be said there about that. I'm not sure if it's actually because it's got uh, the area denial anti-aircraft UAV, or it's that that its missiles can hit, because uh, 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 I honestly, I'm not certain there at all. I have not managed to check that out properly. But it's pretty good at healing. It's not as good as the series. It's not as good as the Noma. It's kind of in the mid, mid row of everything there in the healing front. If you don't have the Noma, you don't have the series situationally and you need a heal, this will do it in a pinch. So first off for me uh, would be to probably to go into here. Again, same as before, you wanna try and get your target lock on speed increased. So target lock on, you can then pick up the two RTBs and potentially either the third RTB or, oh, you can pick up the third RTB as well as the emergency repairs, which gives it pretty good healing capability because although it doesn't have any buffs to healing, they can get the UAVs out a bit quicker uh, after RTBs and then you can keep healing for a bit more of a longer duration. Uh, it's about on par with the Tundra healing if, uh, yeah, it's pretty much about the same there. Uh, so yeah, after the UAV support, my ideally you probably go into the missiles, but you can go into the armor or the situational awareness system. The situational awareness gives it a flat 30% dodge rate against missiles, which is actually quite nice. You can further increase this uh, by taking the reduce the chance of being hit. And again, a uh, chance of being hit by direct fire weapons as well. So defense-wise, you might want to come into here and pick up the extra guided weapons dodge rate and then move into the missiles or the armor system because, uh, again, it's back row, so direct fire's got to go through your front row, your mid row before it gets to your back row anyway. So you might as well pick up the one that gives you know indirect fire first and because the chance are if your mid row and front row is dead, this thing's going to die regardless if you pick up that dodge rate uh, anyway. But the increased dodge rate against missiles will help out a little bit in the back row because it's indirect fire weapon. It can be hit in the back row. From there, you can buff up the armor system, picking both the ship HPs and then going into the storm missile system. Here, the strategy, again, picking up the anti-aircraft support, which is increases, well, allows it to hit in nearby rows, uh, the nearby row, increasing hit rate, stuff like that, which is actually quite nice. You then potentially increase your hit rate further for two more. So now you've got strategy, two hit rate buffs, and you're running, what, need two more. Cooldown over damage. So the damage is going to give you an extra 10% damage. It's an 80 damage weapon, giving you 88 damage. You could potentially bring that to 90 something, over 100 damage per hit. It's it's difficult, this one. It's very probably likely that between taking double cooldown is going to give you similar potential damage output as taking double damage output. Uh, so it's kind of up to you on that one. I personally would probably go for the cooldown over the damage. Uh, just because more shots with the higher hit rate, more chances of things being hit, therefore more dead things, as opposed to less shots being fired, but bigger damage. You may miss some, and that means you got like a larger uh, damage loss for each miss um, compared to you know potentially just swarming the enemy with more uh, missiles. Again, I have seen it hit, uh, so you can use it in that situation to a degree. I wouldn't recommend it though. Uh, here, you want double cruising speed. I believe that does bring it up to around 800 and something uh, cruising speed. So it's a little bit on the slow side for a destroyer uh, and then picking up one of your warp speeds last. Again, at some point, pick up the direct fire um, 
anti-guided weapon uh, dodge rate thing uh, that will help you out a tiny bit. The dual purpose, uh, in my opinion, one of the best carrier types in the game. These are currently the ships I'm missing in my fleet because of the bug. Uh, I have 10 built, only three of them I can find, and three are in my fleet. The, the other seven, I have no idea where they are. Again, you're sat on the back row here, so you can quite happily ignore some of the damage mitigation stuff first, going into Corvettes. I like to pick up the hit rate, as you can see, and then the triple damage mod. Now, this is slightly dependent on what ships you're, you, well, what Corvettes you're putting on this thing. I put, well, I like to put Nebula Chaser Pulses on here, and I like to put Cellular Defenders on here. That's because they have high alpha damage, so giving them a triple damage mod boosts that damage by a further 30%, plus the bonuses they can get already, plus the 30% weapon damage they can get from weapon upgrades. So now you're just stacking all these damage bonuses, and you can actually get Cellular Defenders to hit really damn hard on Guardian DPs. If you're not going to put guard Guardians on here or Nebula Chasers and you've got something that's maybe a little bit, uh, say, Void Elfin or something like that, lower damage output ships, you could potentially put the RTB. At that point, though, I'd recommend just running the AC721 in this spot instead uh, for the faster lock-on speeds because uh, this does struggle a little bit with the lock-on speed because you're only getting the lock-on speed from the Corvette itself. In itself, useful because you can bring use that with AC721s, like five AC721s with Void Elfin on, for an example, and get those out before your cellular defenders out, which means at that point, your cellular defenders are not going to get targeted first, not get blown off the uh, battlefield as quickly. From there, Storm Missile System does something very, very interesting. Picking up Focus Fire sinks all aircraft to attack the target that this thing's targeting. Prioritize carriers means with these together, for those 25 seconds, your cellular defenders, your net pulse nebula chasers will start shooting carriers. Fantastic, because they've got the alpha damage to deal with carriers. Highly recommend that. These should be your first two pickups, in my opinion, uh, if the enemy is running carriers. If they're not, obviously, don't pick these up. They're kind of pointless at that point. At the same time, though, uh, you're not going to get too much damage output out of this thing regardless anyway. I would recommend then picking up double hit rates and then picking up the missile torpedo damages uh, instead of the cooldowns in this situation. It brings you to 94. You can actually push that a little bit higher. I'm missing an extra percentage here, and I haven't upgraded this West, uh, weapon system either at all. So you can get an extra 30% damage output here. It brings it over 110, 120, somewhere around there, which is actually quite nice because that's in a nice range for when it is actually hitting frigates and destroyers. It does a bit of damage. Again, you're not going to see much damage numbers from this, though. It's going to be all about the Corvettes it's bringing in. Double health mod and a physical resistance mod just to keep it nice and cushy. And then you're looking at cruising speed again. It's bringing it up to around, I think it's around 850 uh, cruising speed to get it into that 850 speed fleet. And then you can pick up your last warp speed at some point as well. The pulse cannon type. Um, if you have base Taurus, run base Taurus instead of this. If you do not and you have this, you can run it in place of the base Taurus. It doesn't tank anywhere near as well, and its damage output isn't quite the same. This does sit now on the front row, which sucks a little bit for it. If it was mid row, it'd be so much better and actually probably quite good in that situation. As it's a front row ship, pick up your armor systems early, bring in the ship HP up, and then you can pick one of the physical resistances uh, just to keep it on the battlefield a touch longer. From there, there's no point upgrading the uh, propulsion yet. Uh, from there, personally, you're probably going to go onto the weapon system. You can ignore concentrate fire periodically. It 
it's not going to help you out. It's for eight seconds every 90 seconds. It's just not active anywhere near enough for it to be usable. Uh, I would recommend picking up the double hit rate against frigates and destroyers. And then you're potentially picking up either double cooldown, double damage, or yeah, that's probably what you're doing. Double hit rate into double cooldown, and then you t pick up the double damage at the end. Uh, it's probably the best you're gonna do for the pulse weapon here. Then going over to the pulse energy system, again, increasing the main weapon cooldown first, and then increasing the weapon damage. Has got a nice 15% flat bonus to the pulse cannon damage. Um, so, but picking up the cooldown is gonna help you out a bit more than picking up the damage first. And yeah. That is pretty much it. Again, you've got the propulsion systems. You want this to be a little bit quicker. So double cruising speed and then the warp speed there brings it around 850, keeping in that 850 movement speed fleet. So yeah, it's it works. It does the job. It's not as good as the Taurus, though. If you have the Taurus, I'd recommend running the Taurus over this. You can mix and match, though, if you want to run uh, you know, 10 of these as well as the 10 Taurus. It does work. Just be aware these are far squidgier than the Taurus having, you know, like, I don't think they have any base dodge rate at all. No, like, nothing. You are literally relying on the fact that the armor system is terrible, and, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> so, yeah. In a pinch, can be a front row, I wouldn't say tank, a front row damage dealer, um, but at the end of the day, it is just flat out worse than say the Taurus so I'd recommend running the Taurus instead yeah okay right I've jabbed on enough so don't forget to like comment and subscribe and I'll catch you next time